So the Oklahoma Sooners are up to number five in the new AP Top 25 after that win against the Texas Longhorns and the Red River rivalry. So I wanted to at least get that started with when you were looking at Oklahoma at this point, if you were filling out a ballot, how does that Oklahoma resume stack up to the other best teams in the country? Because I think there is an argument that individually that win against Texas might be one of the best wins in the entire country so far. I think it stacks up pretty well, right? I mean, look, oh, you could tell me that you have Oklahoma and just depending on how you evaluate teams, like really anywhere from like first to eighth. And I, and I really wouldn't have a major problem with it. Right. Like the, it, depending on how good you think some of their opponents have been, uh, how much you value running up the score like they have against some of these bad teams, you know, who was playing quarterback for some of the teams they played, how much you value that the Texas win, right? Are you doing a power rating? Are you doing more of a resume rating? Are, are you doing a blend? How much do you factor in your preseason poll priors, which honestly should be zero, but everybody has some level of bias. Otherwise, you, you really can't make determinations on teams, right? Like, how do we know if anybody is good if we don't have something at least to start with? I, I think five is entirely fair, right? And for Oklahoma, it's going to be, do you run the table? Because one loss to Oklahoma is not going to make the playoff. And let, well, mm-hmm. I guess they could when lose they could lose a regular season and beat Texas again and still be conference championship go. If they lose to Texas in a rematch, they will not make the playoff because the non-conference schedule was atrocious and the rest of the Big 12 this year looks poor. Like Oklahoma cannot go to the playoff this year, I'm fairly sure, based on my numbers, if they do not win the Big 12. I think they can afford a loss. Um, yeah, but, I know. but can the loss beat to Texas in the Big 12 championship game? Yeah, I mean, TCU lost to Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game last year. So that year. would be two Big 12 teams in? No, I don't think Texas would get in at that point. Texas. You don't think conference champion one loss Texas gets in over over non champ one loss Oklahoma? Oh, okay, yeah. assuming Texas is a one loss champ at that point, yes, maybe. But I don't know if Texas is going to be a one loss champion at that point. That's um, fair. I I agree with you in that there are a number of different spots you could put Oklahoma, and there's certainly defensible. I think five. I mean, we talked about it on Saturday night. We thought Oklahoma would jump into the top five, and they did. They did not get any first place votes though, and I I I was surprised. I thought they'd get at least one. Me but too. They, yeah, but they didn't. But I, I'm fine with them at five. I'd be fine with them at four. I'd be fine with them at three, two, one, six, seven, eight. I mean, they're they're a good team. I don't know that they're a great team, but that was a huge win for them. What else stood out um, from the new reset AP Top 25? Uh, so I'll give you guys a little behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So Jack, our buddy Jack, produces HQ shows for us. He wants me to come on to react to Dennis Dodd's power rankings, which are pretty similar. And I asked Jack in the email because he's like, thoughts. And I put a couple like, hey, where this team is ranked, this team, that. And I said, can I ask Dennis if he's smoking crack because (laughs) of where he has Kentucky? And I would ask the same question to the AP voters who still have Kentucky in their top 25. Like, in what world, like, what was the positive that you took away from? (laughs) Is Kentucky getting poached in the Big 12? or like, are we still going back to the Florida game, which still like, that's okay. It was a win at home where you ran all over a team that's not very good. Like, I just don't understand the thinking of having Kentucky still ranked because there really isn't a signature win. But you did play Georgia, who's number one. So credit for scheduling them or having them in your division, I guess. That is simply being a division <laughs> foe. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I'm with you. Like, I think if you look at, like, Missouri fell out. Missouri played in a closer game against LSU and lost, and they fall out. Kentucky got obliterated, and they get to stick in. They have similar resumes, except nobody blew the doors off Mizzou like Kentucky got its doors blown off. I think Mizzou deserves to be ranked more, far more often or far more than Kentucky does. 100% agree. Yeah, Another, I, I, I wouldn't rank either of them. Oh well, yeah, I would. I mean, I would rank Air Force ahead of them. I would rank. Yeah, I, there's a few teams I would have in there that aren't in there over there. Or there. Wyoming. Wyoming just Game had you. a great win over Fresno, and they played Texas all right. Like they played Texas more competitively than Kentucky played for uh, Georgia. I I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but I tweeted it yesterday. Wyoming is five and one with a point differential of plus fifteen. <laughs> 
it's, yeah, like they, it's, they, Wyoming it's not is sustainable. Yeah, Wyoming is five and one, and like, we should celebrate it right now because if you believe that water finds its level, the fact that you're getting <laughs> these bananas games against Texas Tech and App State, um, you know this it it, it might. It, it might get a little bit uh, hairy for the Cowboys coming down the stretch, but if you if they were to maintain this with your only loss as Texas, that's a New Year Six profile. Yes. If they are able to maintain this the rest of the way, Wyoming has a better loss than or a better resume than Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yes, think about mm-hmm. it. Like Wyoming went on the road to play a top five team in Texas and did not get destroyed. Kentucky went on the road to play a top five team in Georgia and got absolutely blitzed. Wyoming they was at home in that game. Wyoming was not at home. Was not at home at Texas. It was at Lar- was that wasn't that game in Laramie? No, the game at Texas. Oh, that's right. That was at Texas. I'm sorry. It was on Longhorn Network. It doesn't exist in Laramie. <laughs> oh, Correct. Right. This, this, this is facts. Texas Tech I, had to go to Laramie. Texas Tech went to Laramie. Yeah. I got confused well, there. Wyoming beat App. What? Wyoming beat Texas Tech. Wyoming beat Fresno. All Kentucky has is Florida, which I mean, Florida's not that much better than than Texas Tech. If they are better, I, I think they probably are. But I don't know that for a fact. Right? Like Wyoming has a better resume than Kentucky. The only reason Kentucky's ranked is the SEC, which had a terrible non-conference year. They've got there's there is some, I mean, as uh as Florida continues to just sort of you know linger Exist. yeah in this space where they have a win over Tennessee. So then it you know that they get tied together. It, it'll all get undone once a, a few more losses get handed out here in conference play. But I I'm disappointed, but I understand why that math gets a little bit tricky for the AP voters. Are Louisville you surprised. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chip. I was going to say Louisville up 11 spots to number 14. Kind of felt like a a validation, you know, like we we weren't going to take not we the AP voters were not taking Louisville seriously based on the competition that it had had, even some of the close results, like in the Georgia Tech game. You have a zero in the loss column in the after the first weekend of October. You're going to take the fast track. I was a little interested that Notre Dame, while now five and two, did drop pretty significantly down 11 spots, even behind Duke. Did that seem like a fair readjustment? They get worse every week. Like the best Notre Dame team we've seen was in Ireland. Then they were a little bit worse against Ohio State, a little bit worse against Duke, and then they were terrible this weekend against Louisville. Like they, they're they going in the wrong direction. They're not getting better. They're getting worse. I, I totally understand the drop. I have a question. This was uh, actually from the Cover 3 tailgate. Jumped in at 8.34 a.m. Andrew says, do you guys think Notre Dame is going to implode now that they are out of playoff contention? They have USC this week, road game at Clemson later in the year, Pitt, Wake Forest, Stanford. What are the thoughts on Notre Dame in terms of looking at the Fighting Irish moving forward? Are they going to be able to steady this ship, finish as a 9-10 win team? Does 8-4 and four count as an implosion? What was their win total? Nine and a half? I think it was eight and a half. No way. It was eight and a half. Yeah, I think it was eight and a okay. half. But so Vegas it, was yeah, not on eight. was not smoking the same stuff Irish fans were. Let's just say that. We're just crack references, you know, smoking <laughs> <laughs> just all over the place today. <laughs> Vegas was not on that good green that uh that, that Notre Dame had all, all throughout the offseason. I I, would, I don't yeah. I don't think there's an implosion like your coach is getting fired and you see the team quit. Um I think there's pretty good makeup of this team. Sam Hartman, I think, you know, as a veteran, he's going to want to play hard and try to encourage people. As a, He's going to try to increase his draft stock. But I also just think in general, I think the people that might have had this team as a playoff contender were just wrong. And this is probably the reality of what this team was. I mean, the odds makers had it pegged right around where it's probably going to be at the end is around eight or nine wins. So I think that's probably what we should have all expected. Do you think Sam Hartman has hurt his draft stock by going to Notre Dame? No. I think if his draft stock was all that good to begin with, he'd already be in the NFL. Do you think he'll be drafted? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sixth, I mean, fifth, sixth round, seventh, you know. Brock Purdy. <laughs> yeah. Last pick of the draft. I think Sam Hartman will be drafted too. Uh, I think it depends too on how the season finishes. Like how does he finish? I, I will say though, Going back to Louisville, I understand that the resume, like Ole Miss has the win over LSU. Louisville now has the win over Notre Dame. If you look at them, they're right next to each other in the polls. Notre Dame's 21, LSU's 22. They've both lost two games. But why is Ole Miss ahead of Louisville? Like, it also has a loss, which Louisville does not yet. SEC. Ole Miss also struggled with the Tulane backup. 
Yeah. I just right. Like, uh, can we please get over this love for Ole Miss? Like, I don't know why the voters love this team so much. I think this is where the preseason polls come in because you set your bias and you don't want to back off of it. I right, Louisville didn't start anywhere on the map, so it takes them longer to get more credit. Ole Miss started there, so you're like, ooh, I thought they were good coming to the season. Oh, man, that loss against Bama looks better now that Bama won at A&M. Like, you just find yourself explaining it away. And to Bud's point, like, most of the times, the preseason perception around the SEC teams is stronger so that they don't drop as far. Hey, Ole Miss is a top five win for the SEC this year, beating two lanes back up on the road. I think I had that as my number three non-conference win for the league. I mean, look, Louisville has a better resume than Ole Miss, clearly. They also have a better resume than USC by far. Think about it. Like, what? Why are they behind USC? Just preseason stuff and Caleb, right? Like, do we think Louisville has a better resume than than Ohio State? No, no. Ohio I mean, State's they, got the Notre Dame. I know that we're. I know you're. So you're does Louisville, not, and, and Louisville. Smoke, Louisville beat them a hell of a lot worse than Notre Dame than yeah, Ohio but, State but did. Ohio State beat them at Notre Dame and by it was three. Better and Notre Louisville Dame was up. Team. Louisville was up three touchdowns with like four minutes to go. Uh, yeah, but does Louisville have a better win than Maryland after Notre Dame? I think that's that's what we're arguing, right? The disparity in the quality of a win versus the rest of the resume. Mm-hmm. Also, just being like a human about this, a, there is a non-zero percentage of the outcome of Louisville Notre Dame that is a credit to Ohio State and Duke. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. just like the the Notre Dame. T- you mentioned they're getting worse every week. The Notre Dame team that uh, f- showed up in the artist that used to be Cardinal Stadium was not as like primed and playing as well, especially defensively as the one that played against Ohio state two weeks ago. So, yeah. And you mentioned fair. USC though, which brings up one of the thing about the poll this week that I really enjoy just a fun little fact. Cause we do criticize voters for, you know, team wins, go up or stay lose, go down. No, no real thought past that. You just kind of slide them around. USC has fallen in the poll this week for the third straight week, despite not losing a game yet. They've gone from five to eight to nine. I'm cool with that. No, yeah, I'm saying I'm just giving the voters credit. Like, it's like, oh, hey, we're actually watching this team and realize, yeah, it's not that good. We're going to slide it down. North Carolina has a better resume than USC. And I don't think it's really close. Ooh. Let's see. All right. They blew out Syracuse, which is, I think, pretty clearly a better team than Colorado. They played app close. They blew out South Carolina. So that's two better wins than anything I, I think that USC has. Uh, they, as we mentioned, who else did they play? Oh, they beat Minnesota, which is mm-hmm. a hell of a lot better than most of the teams that USC has played. I, North Carolina, to me, has a much better resume than USC. I don't disagree. Mm. But they're in the ACC and, you know. That conference stinks. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even kneel the ball to win games in the ACC. <laughs> Listen, you don't, you don't really go through the meat grinder that is facing teams like Georgia Tech on a week in, week out basis. I, right? <laughs> you don't understand what happens when Kyron Drones starts dropping these dimes on you and making making our championship contenders really sweat. All the way to the very end. What you're saying is the only reason Bowling Green was able to beat Georgia Tech was because it didn't have to go through the meat grinder of the ACC first. Did, did, did Bowling Green's offense have Georgia Tech signals? Maybe. Whoa! <laughs> no, no. I Like, this is complete speculation on my part. Okay. But it, it is. Right. I don't think it's unjustified. And we need to kill some time until Danny Daytrader comes back. Um, so Georgia Tech made a change at defensive coordinator before this Miami game and looks pretty okay on defense relative to how Miami's offense had been looking going into the game. Um, They didn't score a single point, I think, on Miami, Ohio. Miami, Ohio shut them out. Is that right? I don't know. They were dominating them pretty late in the game. I I need to check what the final was. And and like Miami, Ohio plays some really good defense for the Mac under Joe Bowen, who's a pretty good coach. You know, I, I knew him when he coached for Norvell. Uh, but man, like, how do you go from scoring 38 on Georgia Tech in Atlanta to zero against Miami, Ohio? Like, it, and Bowling Green had really not looked like that on offense in any other game. So it makes me wonder, like, did they know something on Georgia Tech? And immediately thereafter, they make a make a coordinator change. I don't know. 
It's not it's, up it's to the standard. Such that, a weird result. The, the, qu the quote from Brent Key is that it wasn't up to the standard. And I guess the standard was, <laughs> you're broadcasting the signals. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I have no inside information. Like, I'm not, I'm not no, trying let's to run with it. Let's run with it. Bud no, Elliott reports no. that Bowling Green had George. Have you noticed more teams are using the, you know, like roll open privacy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. things like sheets or whatever you call them? I mean, there's definitely, I think, was it OU Texas? I don't know if it was on one of the pregame shows or actually on the broadcast. They were talking about Brent Venables and the expertise, I think was the word they used, of oh. what a great sign stealer he is, you know, mm -hmm. going back from his time at Clemson. And then they very quickly were like, well, it's legal if the other team doesn't do anything about it, you know? So they definitely, you know, I mean, it happens out there. Look, guys, this almost cost Florida State a national title game against Auburn. You can go back and pretty clear, like, watch the TV copy, marry it up to the box score. Their yards per play tripled after the first drive of the second half when Kelvin Benjamin walks by Jimbo Fisher, Damian Craig, and says, hey, Auburn's calling out our signals. They put the towels up. They go from like 3.4 yards of play to like 9.6. And Auburn got zero stops the rest of the way. Like, I mean, this does happen. I reported on this back in 2013. Like, it happens a lot. I did think one thing was crazy was the – uh in the Georgia Kentucky game, and it, the play didn't matter because Georgia was killing him. But uh, Georgia's sheet, like sign ceiling stop sheet, was so large that you couldn't see the play hit the first down marker or not. So if they had to go to replay there and they didn't have another angle on it, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do a replay because it was that's kind of the one you'd use. We would have had to put an asterisk on Georgia's entire yeah, season. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We'll never know.